I've spent a lot of time lately running online workshops for teachers, and I keep getting the same piece of feedback, that teachers love the breakout rooms. Part of that is that they just enjoy the breakout rooms, but mostly it's because they're really excited to use breakout rooms with their own students when they're teaching their classes. I use Google Meet for my online workshops, and if you're familiar with Google Meet, you know that they don't have a breakout feature. So in this video, I'm going to cover what a breakout room is in Google Meets, why breakout rooms are so critical for making online sessions interactive, whether it's an online class or an online workshop, and finally, I'll share tips and tricks so that you can use breakout rooms effectively in your Google Meet sessions. Breakout rooms are a video conferencing feature that allows you to split all your participants into separate video conferences and then bring them back together at the end. Uh, some platforms, Zoom for example, already has this as a built-in feature. And Google Meets announced a few months ago that they would be adding it. But as of yet, it's still not there. Um, it's probably going to take at least a few more months. So if, like me, you use Google Meets regularly, you know what an important feature this is, and that's why I created this workaround that I'm going to share with you to make breakout rooms work in Google Meet. We all know that online learning can be isolating and, frankly, even a bit boring. Not to mention overwhelming for teachers. Many teachers are spending hours recording their own videos but it can be hard to tell if those videos are even having an impact. Breakout rooms create opportunities for students to engage in active learning and collaborate with their peers. When we do these things, it increases their engagement and it makes the online learning experience more effective. As I mentioned, the teachers from my online workshops, they can't stop raving about how much they enjoyed the breakout rooms. But be forewarned. If you don't set your students up for success, your breakout rooms can quickly become a nightmare, complete with uh, loud, painful noises, wasted class time, and students who disappear into breakout rooms never to return. So let's look at some tips that will ensure your breakout rooms are user-friendly and effective. There are four things to consider to make sure your breakout rooms run smoothly. The first is preparing beforehand. Second is breaking out, entering the breakout rooms. Third is facilitating the breakout sessions. And fourth is breaking back in or returning to the main session. There are two things that you'll want to prepare beforehand. First is creating an activity so the students have something engaging and interesting to do in their breakout session. And second is to prepare the links that you can give to your students. They'll need the links for their breakout room and also the link to the activity. So you want to put all that together beforehand. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of what that would look like. Here's an example of a Google Doc that includes links for the activities. Uh, I have links that the students can use for the breakout rooms, um, organizers. Uh, the first type of organizer, um, this is kind of a simple warm-up where I just give each group a, a table and there's one question at each table and these are everybody's responses. So they go into their breakout rooms, discuss, and fill in the answers to the boxes. It's not necessary to make an organizer for every group. So for in this activity, there's just one organizer and they don't need to answer these questions. They're discussing something else. But um, if anybody has anything they specifically want to address when we come back from breakout rooms, they can notate it here. So those are simple organizers using Google Docs. Um, but if you wanted something more advanced, uh, this is a lot of fun. I use Google Slides for this. Um, and with this activity, give them a word problem in story form, and they have to represent it in different forms. Uh, this is really flexible. So for example, growing shapes, if you're familiar with that, um, you know, I can use all of the features of Google Drawing here. So um, if I wanted to make a growing shape to represent this situation, it doesn't really take very long at all. I can draw right into the slide, um, you know, copy and make it grow like that. Uh, there's also a slide for a table where they fill in missing values. They put it into equation form. Um, and this one is actually really neat. Um, there's a, is a graph. So we give them the background of the graph and they can either plot points or uh, draw lines to represent the graph. Uh, if you are interested in this 
particular activity or others like it, uh, multiple representations of functions. Um, we have a number of these on the, the Teachers Pay Teacher Store, and also we're, uh, our, a lot of our workshops focus on using tools like this. So when it's time for the session, when you'll use your breakout rooms, before your students arrive, you wanna go in and open each of the breakout rooms in a separate tab. I do this by going to the activity links sheet that I've prepared, and on my Mac, I hold command and click on each link. Uh, command click is how you open a separate tab. Um, and if you're on a PC, you can do this by right clicking and choose open a new tab. Before I enter each room, I make sure that my mic is muted and my camera is off. And when you're ready to send your students to their breakout rooms, make sure that everyone's mic is muted in the main room. Uh, especially your own mic. Uh, you're not going to be able to actually talk into any microphones when your students are in break, breakout rooms or you're going to get a ton of feedback. Or if a student leaves their mic on in the main room, it's going to cause feedback for everyone. Now, the good news is that you can mute your students in the main room. So that's one thing I do. Once I um, have them break out, I make sure everybody's muted. If they're not, I turn them off. Before you send them out, you'll also want to give them a time limit. I typically do breakout sessions um, anywhere from 5 minutes to 15 minutes. Now, your students may need permission to enter the room. So as they start moving over, I'm jumping between all the tabs and it says this person would like to enter, this person would like to enter, and I'm giving them permission. The key to facilitation while your students are in breakout groups is just to not do too much. Uh, you're basically a fly on the wall. If you've given them a good activity, that should keep them busy. They'll have plenty to discuss and they won't necessarily need your input. You're gonna hear all the conversations from all the breakout groups. So you won't understand everything that everybody's saying. You'll just kind of get a snippet here or there. Um, if you do need to jump in, if you hear some, a question come up that students don't know how to proceed, remember you need to keep your microphone muted so um, you can make any comments that you need to make in the chat. But most of the time, the only comments I'm making are uh, giving them a heads up when we're getting ready to come back. So the last thing to consider is once you've sent your students to breakout rooms, how do you get everybody back to the main room? Um, I usually give everybody a, a two minute warning in the chat when it's almost time to come back. And then when it is actually time to come back, I'll tell them again, uh, we're meeting back in the main room. Um, sometimes you might have to mute people. Um, if they're still talking and you're waiting for everybody to go back, don't be afraid to use that mute feature. I'll go in and mute everybody in the breakout room. That usually reminds them if they haven't paid attention to the chat that it's time to meet back. When we return, uh, we do a quick debrief. So if I've heard any comments or questions um, during the breakout rooms that I really want to address, that's when I'll do that with the whole group. I'll say, I heard this interesting question. Uh, let's go over that. Uh, and then I also give each group a chance to share what they've done. Uh, giving that opportunity for a brief share out at the end of the session helps kind of cement their learning and it also allows different groups to learn from each other. I hope this video will help you use breakout rooms effectively in Google Meet. I know there's a lot to remember, so I put together a one-page how-to guide with the most important tips that uh, I just discussed. There's a link in the show notes where you can download that for free. Now, the trickiest part of using breakout rooms effectively is having an engaging, interesting activity for your students to do once they're in the breakout rooms. Um, I've been busy designing a number of these activities, and at the time of recording in August 2020, I've just uploaded some math activities that are Google Slides-based activities to our Teachers Pay Teachers store. Uh, if you go to roomdiscover.com slash TPT, you'll find those there. Um, and shortly, I will be adding more for other subjects as well. But if you'd really like to become an expert in hands-on online learning, you'll want to sign up for one of our upcoming workshops. Um, in each session, we'll go over in detail these uh, interactive digital activities. You'll participate in breakout rooms with other educators so you can see firsthand how it works. And at the end of the session, you'll get downloads of all the digital activities that we use in the session so that you can use them with your own students. Uh, you'll find those at roomtodiscover.com slash workshops. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe to our channel. And thank you for giving your students room to discover.